Hi, in this Lightboard session we're going to talk about how the Mule runtime manages its threads. Now, the Mule 4 engine has a reactive engine shuffling your various event processes between different thread pools as appropriate to get the appropriate amount of performance out of your application. Now, the different thread pools that we have, we have a CPU light, these are for threads, or these, these threads are intended for event processes that are not draining the CPU in any significant way. So quick, nice low amount of CPU needed to do these. Now, alongside that, there is a CPU heavy or intensive. If we look at the names for these. Now, it is going to be for anything that's going to be sitting there grinding away on your CPU. So, now these are going to be sized a, a, according to the amount of CPU that you have. So the number of cores is your ability to execute lines of code. So there's no point taking on more load than you can handle. If you're trying to do a whole bunch of number crunching and you're on a very small amount of CPU, you're not going to be able to handle more than a certain number of concurrent requests that are making demands on your CPU. Now, for a lot of things in integration, however, we are going across a network. So there is another thread pool, which is for, and this one's quite a bit bigger, for blocking operations, or I.O. So this one is sized as a function mostly of memory, because when you're going across a network, you essentially got to park the request and then do something else with your time. So if you are using something from the blocking thread pool, it's probably not making many demands on CPU cycles, but it does need to store the state ready for when the request does come back so that you can then pick up and process further. So this one's going to be quite a bit bigger, but I liken this one to the car park. So your threads, you don't need them to be actually on the highway uh, as far as when you're waiting around. So that's what that's the car park, whereas this would be more akin to the lanes in your highway. Okay. Now, if we think about when you're writing code, you've got different types of event processor. So looking overall at a simple flow, let's say we've got uh, a logger operation. So we've got something that's just writing something to the log. Now, that one is not a particularly CPU intensive, nor is it taking enough time to be a, a blocking type operation. So we probably find that the underlying engine would be using our CPU light for that particular part of the processing. But let's say we go and hit a database operation. So we're going across a network. So as far as that one's concerned, so if we're going to db select, okay, so we've got to go across a network. It's going to take essentially an eternity as far as your processing is concerned. So it would be something you might find uses blocking. Okay, so it parks it, waits for the request to come back, gets back some data, and then continues on. Now, if we were doing something like a big map of a, an array to another with some complex mapping rules, so something like the data weave transform message, that could potentially be a CPU intensive. Now, the actual execution of which thread pool gets used and so on, that's to do with the underlying engine optimizing based on your application. So it may not be a strict, this is always going to be this. Uh, particularly when you're using something like transactions, you'll find that because it's doing single threaded execution, it doesn't bounce around between the threads. But this just gives you a, a taster of how the underlying engine may move the request as it's coming through. So you're processing an event, you're trying to do various event processes with different characteristics, CPU light, going across IO, and number crunching. So it will shuffle between the appropriate thread pool to make sure that you self-limit how much load you can take on in a graceful fashion. So 
If you don't have resources available, you could signal what we call back pressure, which says, hey, I am overloaded. I cannot handle this anymore. And the idea with this is so that when you're under extreme load, you handle things gracefully and don't fall over, which was the traditional approach where you just spin up more and more threads, even though you only have a limited amount of CPU or memory, and then you find yourself out of resources. So that, in a nutshell, is how the underlying reactive engine shuffles your event between different threads based on the nature of the event processor.